Mr. Matthew Thornton, one of three New Hampshire men, signer of the Declaration of Independence, agitator of the Stamp Act, a physician, a patriot. We have this beautiful monument here on this 4th of July week. Well, we're in a small little New Hampshire enclave, a little town, and as usual, we're doing our patriotic duty and we're looking for cemeteries that have important significance to the historical foundings of our country. And here is the grave, the actual grave of Matthew Thornton, signer of the Declaration of Independence. So this was Matthew Thornton's son. I like his headstone on the bottom and you're not going to be able to see this, but it reads, Why do we mourn departed friends, or shake at death's alarms? Tis but the voice that Jesus sends to call them to his arms. Andrew Thornton, another son of Matthew Thornton, and his headstone reads, One lies interred beneath this clod that always did obey his God, and willingly, I'm not sure what this word is, willingly consigned his breath, for Christ his Lord has conquered death. Here's an unknown person who died on September 11th. As you can see, the tablet under which they lie is cracked in a number of places. So this sad soul had three children, one died at 19, one died at one, and then one was an infant without a name. Yeah. Literally, it just says an infant. Yet again, we are at another cemetery, still in New Hampshire. This one is Kingston Plains Cemetery, and we are, once again, looking for another signer of the Declaration of Independence. This is my brother's bread and butter. He gets real excited about this stuff in a kind of absurd way. But um, who are we here to see, by the way? Josiah Bartlett. Josiah Bartlett. Look, his poor wife just has like a tiny headstone leaning up against his. Hmm. What is it? Just a, a plaque, but it's a skew. What do you mean, the skew? It's off. Oh, because it's off. So there's a SAR now. We've seen GAR. Is that Sons of the American SAR, Resolution? Sons of the American Revolution. Yeah. Actually, thinking about this, you know, this is really good because we're doing this on the 4th of July weekend. So it's almost like we're doing some kind of otherworldly patriotic duty. Some sacred patriotic duty, right? We're just being, yeah, well, standing we're... in the gap for all the people that came before us. And you see how many people were in Boston, right? At the burying grounds there, mm -hmm. at that cemetery. What, what was that called? The Granary. Granary. The Granary. Mm -hmm. 1660. And yet here, no one is out to honor Josiah Bartlett. Some people are just more famous than others. Yeah, you're right. Even though they did the same things. I mean, they put their lives in danger as much as the next guy. You could have been imprisoned, uh, arrested, all your stuff taken, your yeah. assets forfeited, your children taken from you. I mean, it was not an easy undertaking for these individuals. There was a lot on the line, despite the fact they were educated, aristocratic, wealthy individuals. They, they, they had, hey, they had more to lose than the common man. You can even make that argument. Yeah. You know, yeah, sure. the common man just dies on the field. He dies, but you can lose everything you have and be punished throughout the rest of your life and up to and including death as well. What? Will you whip him? Whip him. Here behind me lies the remains of one William Whipple signer of the Declaration of Independence, an ardent patriot. He was also a delegate for the state of New Hampshire three times at the Continental Congress. The tomb behind me was replaced in 1976 
by the Rockingham Bicentennial Committee. It already looks beaten up and battered now in that short amount of time. I can't imagine what it looked like prior to 1976. And William Whipple has a nice flag post here with an American flag flying high right next to his tomb. Members of his family are buried alongside of him. And this is John Langdon. He was a signer of the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, it's probably a family tomb. Two L's? Oh. That is really hard to read. Yeah. We are now in Kittery, Maine, guys. This is the oldest town in all of Maine. And we are looking to find a place to eat, find some grub. Guys, we're going to Chauncey Creek Lobster Pier. I'm so excited. We're going to have our first shot at lobsters in the state of Maine. This has been a bucket list item for me for at least a number of years. But um, I had lobster in Belize. I loved it. Now we're going to compare it with what everyone considers the capital of lobsters up here in the Northeast and uh, see if it can beat those uh, Belizeans. I guess this is a pick your own lobster over here. Look at this. That's awesome. All right, I definitely got to get a lobster while I'm here. Right over. Okay, thank you. I've never seen this setup before, so if I'm a little like fanboyish no, right now, no, don't no, no, no. don't blame me. Yeah, don't worry about it. Now, what do you do? You actually just like pick this out of the uh, the pool, or you guys pick it out? Honestly, uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm just... <laughs> yeah. Do you know how to do this? How do you, do you pick it out for me, or yeah. or do I grab it myself? And um, do you mind if I video because I've never done this sure. before? Okay. If you want to grab it yourself. You can. I can? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and it won't grab me, you know will what it? Size you're um what is it? One one fourth pound, is that what it is? The poundage for these? Um we don't have the pound and a quarter, but these are a pound and a half to like two. And okay. Then these are two to two and a half. Gotcha. I just want to try it, so maybe yeah. a pound, pound and a half, and we're gonna yeah. share it. And how do I eat these things? Honestly, oh, I don't even um, know. I know that sounds stupid, but I'm from Maryland. Nice one. That one right there? You like that? I, Do you like the claw meat? Yeah, I love claw meat. Okay. Yeah, That's yeah. A good one. I've only had lobster tails before, so oh, I've never so had a full lobster. Claw. Okay. Um, but yeah, whoever takes is this a male or a female? Do you know? It's but a just, male. It's a male. Okay, I'm gonna name him Sam. Okay. All right. Sounds good. After my son, but I don't eat my son. So <laughs> okay, so I take this over somewhere. Back no, to the you seamount? are also. I just need to know your table number. Okay, we are table twenty-one. Twenty-one. Guys, this is the best clam chowder I've ever had in my life. Better than the white horse. Sorry, white horse. Yeah, this is really, really good. So, I was thinking like a lobster roll would be like a sushi roll or something, but it's basically just like on a burger bun. Or a hot dog bun. Yeah, and piled with uh, lobster on just the inside. Yeah. Okay. So, let's try this, baby. Here we go. That is good. I guess they're served cold. Yeah, mm. it's served cold. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. But the next one we're getting, we're gonna get a um, oh, one and a half to two pound lobster boiled, so we can try it. I think they do serve these hot. You can get them hot. Oh really? Okay.
right, ma'am. What do you say? Squeeze this? Squeeze it and pull it, twist it to pull it off. It's super hot right now. Um, there we can crack it. You have the uh, like the nutcracker here. I guess we take these off. I guess I don't think he's gonna bite you anymore. Is so. The body. Yeah. How do you, you do get it? In there, you see a bunch of green stuff, and you see it eat all that. Is that like the mustard on crabs or something? It's crazy good. Yeah, it's like the crab stuff. Okay. How do, how do we get the, the tail off? So the biggest um. Yeah, walk him through it so he can the break. Crackers. Yeah. Those ones you want to put on the sides. Sorry, you can Chris. even do it with your hand if you really want to. It's pretty hot though. Like this? Yeah, you want to pull the tail out so you can pull the bottom part out so it's more straight. So that this little flap, like the bottom of its tail, you can straighten it straighten out. Straighten it out, yeah. Straighten out like that. And then you put the crackers on the sides. Up of here? That, of this part. And then you can like just squeeze. Right here, up here? Top? Yeah, like in the middle kind of. You just kind of squeeze and it loosens up and then you'll be able to get into the meat on the underside. Yeah. Don't be afraid to just pull this out. I mean, if you want to, I don't know, man. You tell me. You can see so we can kind of crush it to like that. Crush and it. You like turn it over a little bit. Crush and, and twist. Kind of... What am I doing? Just peeling this stuff off? Yeah. So first, when you you crack it on the sides, that'll loosen it up under there. All right. And you'll be able to pull that tail out. And with the the knuckles and the there you go. Claws twist and pull easier. it hard. Like this? Yeah. There you go. And you eat that stuff? Yeah, it's, try it out. A lot of people love it, and some people would just think it looks weird, so they don't. So with these, we're just like cracking them like crab claws, yeah, my right? Favorite, my favorite part is the knuckles, so right under the claws. Where's that? Here? Oh, this right, all these like right under the claws. Okay. Oh, uh, pull it off. Then you just eat it. And pull it in your mouth. Like pull it off. Yeah, the claws and the knuckles. Okay. If you get those out, you just yeah. You and know. with this one, we just batter it until. Yeah, there's not as much meat inside the body itself. Okay. But the tail and the claws and the knuckles, and even sometimes you can get out some meat from the legs, the little legs. Okay. okay. Do you crack? The, do you crack this anymore? Or you just start digging out of here. You can dig out of there, or if you want to loosen it up even more, you just keep on cracking on the sides. Oh, nice. All right. All right. Well, thank you. We're gonna figure the rest out. Appreciate it, man. All right. We got the. Uh, Tail off at least, so main lobster meat, my friends. Looks great. Tastes better. There's the knuckle meat right there. Right? Knuckle here or knuckle there? Crack down. Yeah, that's crack. good. I'm gonna crack, I'm gonna start here though. This is what he said is good. But there's like a lot of hammering that goes on when you're doing Maryland crabs. I don't see anyone hammering around here. Like this this guy, I would like hammer the hell out of this tall. Wouldn't you? All right, so we got this like green stuff inside the lobster, and I'm assuming it's going to be like the mustard and the crab. So I'm going to try it. Did you clean out the, the big claw? Uh, most of it, yeah. But... You want to try this, buddy? Yeah, go ahead. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's exactly what it tastes like. Shit. Like the mustard, yeah. Like it's intestines or guts or something. Yeah, that's a little, um, a little earthy, fishy. It's not totally bad, though. It's not like uh, when I was eating steers balls out in Montana. It doesn't, it doesn't disgust me, but it's definitely an acquired taste. <laughs> so try the mustard. Go ahead. It's like crab mustard, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. But there you go. That's why you don't eat the insides. Just lungs and intestines and guts, and there's not really any meat here. But hey, you live and learn, and that's awesome. Thanks, buddy. Shit, man, don't film them. <laughs> film the guy taking the dump. Eat the damn dump. It's crazy. Welcome to Portland, Maine. These guys are just on the side of the road, man. Just living. This town is full of marijuana dispensers. 
Welcome to downtown Portland, Maine. I've never seen Maine before, but I had lobster tonight. There's a gay church to the right. There's a lot of white people all over my side. Gay people with a light on their bike. We're doing it right tonight. Yeah, dude, there's a lot of homeless. This was a good choice, dude. Damn. Well, I heard it's good. Way to ruin my experience of Maine. Seriously, man, I've seen more in the last five minutes than in all of, like, yep. New Hampshire, Rhode Island. That's there it right is. There. there it is. There it is. All right, guys, we made it to uh, Portland, Maine. I'm here having a beer at Matthews. This is the oldest bar in Portland, established 1872. We're out on this roof deck, and the bar itself looks like crap, with a bunch of like video games and machines and interactive uh, games, but it's really nothing to look at. If you're coming here thinking you're gonna see like this uh, antique nostalgic place that has some kind of like neoclassical or Victorian look, Forget about it. It looks like your grandfather's uh, basement on the inside. On the outside, up here, I mean, okay. Whatever. And we're also the only ones here, and our bartender kept saying, go upstairs, go upstairs, there's a concert getting ready to go on. I think she met it somewhere else. Well, we're the only ones up here. No, I mean like down the street, like you guys in town oh, for the concert. Oh, for the concert. Right okay, well, I don't know what concert's going on. But, um, okay, so they have darts here, so I might throw some darts. Hey, Chris, the last time we were throwing darts, do you know where we were? Amarillo, Texas. Yeah, and what happened? I got darts in my hand. You got darts in your hand because you were drunk as hell, dude. Fucking dart in your neck. Yeah, right. He was so drunk, he's like, well, the story was, if you guys go back to my video, but anyway, there was, um, there was this professional dart throwing group there that we met, and Chris is like, let me put my hand here and throw a dart in my hand. And so the first time I think he hit between your fingers. The second time he went right into your finger and you were bleeding. bleeding. And, at the, and at the time it was like during the COVID crap. So the people were walking around and telling us to sit down, but no one cared that Chris was bleeding all over the place without a mask. Bizarre. Move the camera. I'm, I got it. Look at that. That's the squirrely one. Almost. Out. You threw the squirrely one at the end. We just found our own bar. If you go through the door behind me from Matthews and you come over here, there's no one here. Chris, what do you want to eat? We'll cook you some food. Make whatever we want. I guess we can make a beer or make an omelet, maybe. It's like a private party area over here. What's the best bar around here? Bed one. Tell me, what are you making there? Huh? What are you making there? Slice pie. What oh, is a pizza you're making? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's weird town. Kidnapping this girl. <laughs> it's a weird town. 
Join us next time on Travel with Trey when we visit a one-of-a-kind McDonald's and local parade in Freeport, get intimately acquainted with giant trolls, and visit the one-time home of our nation's most famous author of horror novels. All this and more when you travel with Trey. Remember to like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel to keep yourself up to date on all my latest content. Thank you and I'll see you soon.